The ultimate goal of the National Space Society is uh, nothing less than the settlement of space and the use of its vast resources for the dramatic betterment of humanity. We are not the only people to have uh, thought about this goal. If you look at the Augenstein Report, which is the foundation of Obama's space program for, at least for humans, and I quote, the ultimate goal of human exploration is to chart a path for human expansion in the solar system. And if you look at what was the view of the previous administration, which of course was Republican, you can take the following quote from Dr. John Marburger, who was the science advisor for President Bush. And he said, and I quote, President Bush's space vision is to begin now for a future in which the material trapped in the sun's vicinity is available for incorporation into our way of life. Fundamentally, Democrats, Republicans, and the National Space Society all agree, at least loosely speaking, on what our long-range goals should be for human spaceflight. Our strategy in the National Space Society is to, in the near term, is to support those aspects of the space program which we feel are the most likely to accelerate humanity's drive towards these goals. Now, one of the things that you hear over and over again, which is basically true, is that resources on the Earth are limited. In addition, there's another important related fact, and this is that the average human is very poor as compared to a standard of living in the United States. The poverty line in the United States is about a factor of three below the our average level of income. But the average person in the world, and this is the average person in the world, not poor people in the world, the average person in the world has an income which is a factor of seven below ours, well below our poverty line. And of course, poor people in the world, uh, by human standards, live in a, a standard of living which is much less than what I've been talking about so far. One of the things that the human race, and I think just about everybody would agree with this, over the long run would like to do is to bring everybody, the average of, of, of all humans, up to something which is similar to what we have in the United States and other advanced countries. To do that, that means the world economy has to be increased by a factor of seven if you make uh, an assumption that uh, there's not going to be any more population growth and that advanced countries are satisfied with their current standard of living, which is obviously not the case and uh, for very good reasons. If we relax that assumption that the standard of living will advance and in, increase in advanced countries and also that the world's population is also going to increase, then that factor of seven goes up substantially. Where are we going to get the resources for such a large economy and to do so in a fashion which is environmentally benign? There is a solution to this problem, and that is that the vast majority of the resources of the solar system, by orders of magnitude, lie not on this planet, but elsewhere. Now, I'm not going to speculate on how long it'll take us to tap into those resources, at least not tonight, but we can use those resources to overcome this particular constraint. Another thing which is of interest in all this is that the impact of the media harping on the fact that resources are limited, that we're having environmental problems because of that, and ignoring space as a solution, is, it's been fairly dramatic on the American psychic. Throughout our history, a fundamental part of the American dream has been that each generation is going to be better off than the one before. However, before the current recession, just a, a little bit before, polls indicated that for the first time in history, the average American no longer believes this to be true. They think that future generations will be worse off than they are today. The situation in Europe is actually far more pessimistic than it is in the United States. 
The American approach to problems in the past, which, would, which involved constraints, has generally not been, well, we'll have to live with those constraints and cut back on this and, and that. And as a lot of pundits about the future have suggested that we really ought to do. The American approach is to find some way to smash those limits. And space provides a way of doing that. Let's see what this means. The space program is not just about new technology, although that's important. The space program is not just about applications like CONSATs, all that's important. The space program is not just about new knowledge, all that's important. The space program is not just about exploration, all that's important. Nor is it about defense alone, all that's clearly important. In fact, space is not just about all those things combined, plus the other benefits that the space community typically cites. In actuality, space is far more important. Why? Because it is the foundation of the human future. We need those resources. The resources exist. Eventually, we'll be able to get them. Space is not a luxury. It is not a nice thing to have. It is fundamental to the human destiny. With space, we can obtain a prosperous future, a future which restores the American dream, and a future which is hopeful for all. Thank you.